Hey, Connection Naz, good morning. It is a joy to be with you today. We're excited to worship with you across the airways and meet you in your home. We know that this is uh, continuing to be um, difficult on all of us to be hard. apart from each other. This is our 10th week streaming online services and online uh, messages. And so we just want to say we miss you and we love you and we've been praying for you by name. And it's a joy to see you um, every once in a while on Zoom together or phone calls, hearing your voices makes both of us uh, very glad. So uh, we hope today that you enjoy this service together with us. Yeah, but before we go too far, we want to make sure and bring attention to our graduates. Um, for for uh, Megan Kennedy graduating from college, Woo-hoo! Carly Castillo graduating high school, yes, and Aiden Hayner graduating high school as way well. Way to go! We're way so proud to of go. you. We are so proud of you. We're sorry that this is the way it is. Uh, we're sorry for all the things that you've missed over these uh, last couple months and your senior year and all the rest. Uh, but we're with you in this. We love you. We're we're proud of you. And we're excited for all that God has for you in this life to come. Hear this invocation as we continue in our worship this morning. God of our best hopes, you keep watch over all that you have created to nourish it with the vitality of your loving care. Where human intentions go astray, your faithfulness shows us the way to life in abundance. Where human institutions falter, your kingdom endures forever. You regard with kindness all who are lost, ill-oppressed, disregarded, or trodden down by any form of adversity. And in Jesus Christ, you become one with us in suffering so that we might become one with you in commitment to the life of the world. Therefore, it is right that we should praise you with our whole being. Amen. Let's worship together. Now we're going to hear from Sarah for our morning announcements. Hey, church, Sarah here, day 65, coming to you from my home office live. I'm still going strong here. So lots of things going on this time of year. We just had Mother's Day. Thank you for sending in your Mother's Day pictures. And hopefully you were able to spend some time with your moms, talk to your moms, um, all those fun things um, during this time. Also, graduations, can you believe it? High school and college graduations. So, don't want anybody to feel left out that you missed any of the music. We want to thank and congratulate high school graduates, Carly Castile and Aiden Hayner. Congratulations to both of you. Hats off to Megan Kennedy, college graduate. I can't believe it. Time flew for us. I don't know about you. So thanks to all the graduates. It's been a very interesting, different, difficult time to be going through graduations. So congrats to all of you and to the kids that are wrapping up school here pretty quickly and to all of those homeschooling moms and dads. um, Hats off to you as well. What a time to that we are in. So summer is coming. So hopefully you can think of some summer plans besides doing school activities. So with on with the announcements, emails. The new distribution for the emails seem to be working fine. You should be getting them. And there has been no problem. Check your spam if you're not getting them. But I will say I am back now on the distro and I'm getting mine. So thank you very much, Cherie. And um, hopefully you're, you're getting yours as well. Prayer nights at church, again, this week, Wednesdays, 6 to 8 p.m. You can bring a mask. There will be social distancing or a mask will be provided. But feel free to come and stop in and spend that time in prayer um, with our pastors. So um, really a great time if um, you would like to pray with them. So um, that's open to anyone. Also, thanks for everyone that helped with the help box. It is open. It can be, items can be put in, items can be dropped off. So again, that is open and open to the community, open to the church. So please help yourselves, or if you know someone, let them know as well. So thank you very much for that. Also, as we continue um, with more good news, right, Val and Art are both 
recovering and doing well. Please continue to pray for Val in the next coming days and weeks for rehab and for her chemo. So again, it was great seeing her face last week. I don't know about you guys, but it was really nice to see her and to hear her voice. And if you want to be energized and get outside, I have something great for you. And if you want to hang out with our pastors and like get some sunshine, feel free to stop by the church anytime and pull some weeds. The weeds are kind of taking over, as you can imagine. So please, no spraying, so no one has to worry about anything with that. However, there are weeds, and you can bring your gloves, throw everything when you're done in the dumpster, and it would be greatly appreciated. Also, thanks to um, a couple of folks in our church, past couple weeks was nurse appreciation. So thank you very much to our nurses. This week, this past week, I should say, um, it was National Police Week. So thank you, Matt Bach, for keeping us safe um, in Castle Rock, in our community. Thank you for all that you're doing, being on the front line. So much appreciated, and do not take that for granted. So please, guys, show uh, Matt your appreciation for all he does for us. Um, last but certainly not least, tithe and offerings. God has been so good during this time, and each one of you have been so faithful. We'll continue to ask you to be faithful with your tithes and offering. And it's Venmo, it's PayPal, it's put a stamp on it, put it in an envelope and mail it. Thank you again. Hugs to everyone. It's tough to believe that we're still going through this time. And I will say Pastor and Cherie have really done a nice job of keeping us informed and also working through as the state of Colorado navigates its openings and throughout the phases, they'll continue to adhere to that and to go through the protocols necessary for church. So be on the lookout as things begin to evolve and change on what might be coming up next. So hope to see all you soon, virtual hugs and back to you, Pastor. Thanks so much, Sarah, for those announcements. I'm encouraged by what God is doing in our church body. And I know that this season is full of lots of highs and lows. And so we're going to sing a song that says exactly that. And it actually thanks the Lord for those lows and those highs. So let's sing. Lord, you have done great things.
enjoy these video testimonies from your church. Enjoy. Hi, um, Roger and Vicki here. Uh, like a lot of you, we're uh, very displeased to uh, be in constant quarantine and all the changes that is uh, brought about, but there has been a lot of uh, positive for us from that. Uh, for me personally, uh, it's allowed me to have a lot more time for reading and study, mm -hmm. which which I miss. And um, uh, it it's a return to a lot of the you know the favorites like like uh, my photography. I've been able to do a little more in that, and of course I still get out uh, to uh, ride bicycles. But for the most part, uh, I spend the time uh, here in in the basement apartment where we're living um, and uh, spending a lot of time uh, reading commentaries, uh, reading articles about faith, uh, books that I've put down and haven't picked up in a long time, articles, uh, real life stories. Uh, all of that has been very interesting for me uh, to return to, to and and it's been quiet so I get to get to spend that time with God and a little deeper reflection. Uh, this has led for me to do uh, some things other things that I've always wanted to do, and including um, a little bit of writing, uh, and I've been uh, blessed to uh, to lead a uh, a small online uh, discipling group uh, with some new believers. That has really been none of them uh, that you would know uh, or go to church with us, but uh, uh, God has put me in a position where uh, I've got to introduce uh, Him and His Son to others, and it's been really good. And of course, this has led. Obviously, to more study, um, more personal reflection, and of course, uh, deeper time of prayer. There are some other things I've been doing too. Um, becoming a, a, a house husband, uh, learning how to cook, uh, and in, enjoying that. We don't even have a dog, and I'm a dog walker, uh, and it gets me outside a little bit. And I thought, well, you know, with all of the stuff in the yard, maybe even do uh, some, some crafty stuff, which I, haven't, I don't usually do, but uh, even uh, taking a shot at, at making some, uh, some pine needle baskets. But uh, all of that just fills the time, but I find my, my daytime thinking time really focused on God, and, uh, and that has been, been really wonderful. So what has uh, been God been doing in our lives? Well, for me, I'm kind of viewing it as a, um, a Sabbath with a social slowdown. Um, it's made things quieter, um, a time for cleaner air, quieter streets, more bird song, less busyness um, that comes with people slowing down a bit. It has allowed more time to reflect and be more flexible and creative. Um, Never thought I'd be sewing masks, but that's something that's on the side. And even though I'm still working, it has been quieter and a more blessed commute. Um, there's less traffic. I've been enjoying the um, spring sights that now I have time and ability to look at because I'm not so worried about the crazy drivers. And it, it gives a, a time to kind of worship on the way to work um, and as I see the promise of new life. Work is less hectic with fewer meetings and people. There's more time to reflect on God's goodness and provision. Our friends are sharing their home with us. And we can meet with you, our church online, and we're healthy. And we have opportunities to share God's love with our work friends and those we encounter who serve us out, whether it be helping support some of our local uh, food servers or um, being in the grocery store. Um, it's important to give a lift to people. Even though things over the past five months have been a bit different than we had planned, and there have been disappointments and a missing of hugs from you all, um, we see God's hand and continue to trust Him for what is ahead and uh, pray for each of you. That's it from here. Uh, hope you're enjoying worship. We are too. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, thanks for those testimonies. What a blessing it is to hear God at work within our congregation. Thank you for those. And I think here in just a minute, Matt is going to read Scripture. Um, and I think as you, hear, as you hear the passage he reads, I think you'll find the same message, that God is at work in 
his world and in his people. Matt, if you would read. Good morning. I was asked to read Jeremiah 29, 1 through 14. So here we go. You'll have to bear with me. Uh, I can't really pronounce some of the names, so you might end up with some initials. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jay and the Queen Mother, the court officials, and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen, and the art artisans had all gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to E, son of S, and to G, son of H, whom Z, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back from the captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Thanks, Matt, for reading that scripture. We continue to worship King Jesus this morning. The song we learned right before we went to quarantine. So it's been 10 weeks since you've heard it. But I hope and pray that you worship with me this morning as we sing. in mystery and fearsome
praise for who you are. You are holy. And you do reign. And Father God, in the midst of all of this, where we seem so uncertain at times and so sure at times, we know that there's one place that never shakes, that is never uncertain. And Lord, that's you. For you are holy and you reign. We give you our time and attention today. We ask that you would open our eyes to see you at work in the world where we can participate with you. And we ask, we ask that you would open our ears to hear. Because God, you reign. Let's sing that chorus one more time. So we will continue in our, um, in our walk through the, Peter, the, the letter that Peter wrote. Um, so starting in chapter 3, verse 13, we'll read through verse 22. But, but Peter continues um, to encourage and to really kind of spell out um, the story of Christ in the world and what that looks like and how that goes about. So let's 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 read the text and um and then we'll and then we'll we'll talk through it and work through uh, what Peter has to say. Um, <clears throat> starting in verse 13, chapter 3, 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if this could possibly be God's will, than for doing evil. Christ himself suffered on account of sins once for all. The righteous one on behalf of the unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it was by the Spirit that he went to preach to the spirits in prison. In the past, these spirits were disobedient. When God patiently waited during the time of Noah, Noah built an ark in which a few, that is eight, lives were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves you now, not because it removes dirt from your body, because it is, because it is the mark of a good conscience toward God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at the right side. Now that he has gone into heaven, he rules over all the angels, authorities, and powers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, so as we, as we talk through this text, um, I, want us to, I want us to think about what it is to, to be a good guest. And that's kind of the, the way I want to think about this passage. Maybe you've heard the term uh, house rules. Um, uh, particular games, you know the drill. Given, given games that have various rules, you know there's, there's, there's particular games we play in our houses that, that may have variants to the rules. In fact, it wasn't long ago, um, but before, I guess it was a little while ago, before quarantine stuff, we were over at the McCrary's house, and we were playing Uno, and they had some adaptive rules. 
thanks for that. It was it made Uno a little more crazy, and it's already a crazy game. So, but you understand house rules, my house, my rules, right? We we kind of understand how that goes. Maybe it's a game like Jenga. You know, I think the real rules to Jenga, if you don't know Jenga, it's the little building block game, three three blocks to every level of uh, of of the tower, and you remove the blocks and stack them up, and you go around whoever knocks it over. Um, and I think the real rules are that it's one hand and one block. So if you touch the block, that's your block, and you have to take it. And that's not the rules in my house because I want to see how tall we can get it. So use both hands, check and see for blocks that are movable and all that. So the house rules. Another, for instance, a, a buddy of mine, um, I, had, I had grown up playing. We had a foosball table. Foosball is the table soccer game. We had a foosball table in our church growing up, and, and it was a pretty nice one. We played a lot of foosball. I get into college, and you know how college is. There's those kind of entertainment places where you're playing ping pong and foosball and, and all the rest, and, and I got pretty good at foosball, and, and in college, I ran into a guy where we were pretty heavily, pretty, pretty tightly matched. Well, we'd become friends because we'd played soccer together. In fact, he was from down the road here in Canyon City, and we'd play foosball. Uh, but here's the thing. When we would run the table, it was, it was house rules or, or something like that. And the rule is spinny no winny. <laughs> Chad, if you're listening, the, it, spinny no winny. You can't just zing those, those men and make them spin. It's not part of the game. That's not the way it's to be played. It's a twitch of the wrist. You have to just use your wrist in this game. This is, this is house rules, what it means to be the host. And if you are the guest, you, you learn to submit to the rules of the house. This is what it is to be a good guest, right? It's a pretty basic understanding. When I come to your house, I don't, I don't get to do as I wish. I, I pay attention to the way in which things are. I wonder if you've ever had a guest that, that just kind of makes their way in your house. I remember some time ago, this, this happened to us. We had guests coming, and, and we knew some things, and so we kind of set some, some um, pre recorded, if you will, um, uh, parameters for their visit. You know, we wanted to make sure that they understood, hey, these are the way things are for us right now, and, and we'd appreciate it if you would, if you would comply to those things. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an odd request or, or, or out of line, I, I didn't think. Uh, but just a request ahead of time to say, hey, you know what, this is, this is kind of house rules, if you will. And I remember when they showed up, they, they showed up and, 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 and came in. We had our greetings and everything, whatever, whatever, but it, was, it did not take long for those parameters to be, to be overstepped and, and, and pushed on. And that puts me then in a weird position of, now how, do I, how am I a good host in the midst of this? How do, I, how do I host well when I'm trying to lay down these parameters? I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of a challenging situation. Now, I'm not talking today about being a host. I'm going to talk about being a guest and what that looks like and how Peter kind of shapes that. But I remember talking later to a friend of mine about the whole situation. I was just like, man, I, I don't even know. I don't know what I was supposed to do. I don't know. I don't know. And they made this statement, they responded, and they said, well, I mean, you, your house, your rules. And, and, and while there's something fair about their, that statement, there's, there's something a bit abrasive, too, about that statement. Again, I, I want us to talk about being a guest, not a host, but still yet, uh, we, we can understand the difference between being a host and being a guest. Remember, Peter is talking to the, so, the sojourner. It depends on which translation of Scripture you're going to be working with, but you, you'll, you'll find through the letter, in the beginning of the letter particularly, you'll hear Peter 
talking to the exile or, or the, the sojourner, the traveler, the, the person who is in a land that is not their own. And I think what Peter's really trying to do is, is help the people he's writing to be, be good guests. Even though they are in a challenging time, even though they are exiles, Peter wants to shape in them a, a, a goodness, what it means to be Christian, even though you are under the reign of oppression. So to live in the land, even when your party is not in charge of the house, right? I would suggest that no matter what the regime is that you live under, the role of the Christian would be to pray for the community and to live for the good of the community. You remember the rabble-rouser is in, uh, in the, the story of Jesus' uh, crucifixion, Barabbas. He was the one that people wanted, but that was not the story of Christ. So, so to shape this a little bit, let's, let's back up. The other, the other day, we, we talked about it. Wednesday, we opened up the church. Um, Wednesday evening, for, for about an hour and a half, Shereen and I came down here, and we just spent some time in prayer. We had the, the doors open and a bottle of sanitizer, and we set, the, we, we set our, our, our altars uh, six feet apart from each other so we could uh, kind of, if anybody wanted to come. We ended up spending some beautiful time with Bill and uh, but but in the midst of that, we, we opened up the text, and we were reading Scripture that night. And Shri and I, between the two of us, we had a really good time. Um, but we opened up the text for the devotional that day. And I had been, I had read it earlier in the morning, and I had been kind of working through it and, and reading it and, and paying attention. And, and we read it that night, and it just, it just kind of opened up some things. So the, the text for, the, for Wednesday's uh, devotional was Jeremiah 29, 8 through 14. Uh, but, but that particular, you might recognize Jeremiah 8 through 14. Jeremiah 29, 11 is in there, um, a fairly famous passage. One, in fact, that we will read over our graduates. Um, so may it be that God gives you a hope in the future, on and on. Um, uh, but if we back up in that passage... There's something important to hear, and I think it's the same message that Jeremiah brings to the exiles in Babylon that Peter is bringing to the exiles in, in Rome, if you will. They're in Asia Minor, but under Roman rule. The text goes like this. Build houses, settle down, cultivate gardens, and eat what they produce. Get married and have children. Then help your sons find wives and daughters, and daughters find husbands, in order that they too may have children. Increase in number there, so that you don't dwindle away. Promote the welfare of the city, where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because your future depends on its welfare. See, I think this is the same message that we're dealing with in Peter. Peter's writing this message that, that, that the people in exile would, would live well in exile. At this point, though it's, a, though it's the same message, instead of being ruled by Babylon, they're ruled by Rome. And at the beginning of the passage, Peter is speaking, excuse me, Peter is, is speaking over the, the people a, a question. So what good is it? Uh, or, sorry, let me get my train of thought here. Peter opens the text this week with a question to the people who might be afraid. You see, what was happening at the time was the time of Nero, probably. Nero persecuted Christians pretty intensely. It was pretty, pretty powerful persecution. I'm sure word spread across of what's happening in Rome. And though Peter speaks of persecution within his letter, it, historically it's not necessarily um, understood that there, was pretty, that there was intense persecution happening to the people in Asia Minor in which Peter was writing. Uh, but the possibilities 
were, were there? Would, would Nero's heavy persecution sweep across the land and into this space? Though that did not happen, it doesn't seem, there probably still was some persecution. Certainly, there was probably um, ridicule and angst and tension for these Christians. So the debate, the debate, go, the debate goes on how heavy the persecution was for Peter's, for Peter's um, constituents, those who he was writing to. But he was encouraging them to, to, live, to live well anyways. That in the midst of crises, live well. The same message that Jeremiah brought. And so Peter asked the question, who, who will harm you over doing good for the city? Working hard for the city, praying for the city. Who will harm you over that? And of course, the implication is, well, no one would. But of course, there is still persecution that can happen. And so whatever, for whatever reason you endure persecution, Peter says, do not fear. And do not fear the persecution. Uh, do not Do not fear that. Maintain your innocence. And when we hear that, uh, we we might have have visions or memory of the story of Jesus, right? That Jesus was indeed innocent, even though he was persecuted, and he remained innocent. He did not fight back. He, He lived well in the neighborhood, regardless of the host's activity. You see, Rome was the host, and Rome had their rules. But in the midst of all kinds of uh, lies and misguided people, Jesus gets pushed into his crucifixion. So I would say that, that, that though the message of Christ, the message of Peter is that we, were to, that we are to live in the land well, even in the midst of persecution, we don't. Unfortunately, we're not always good guests in this sense. We take our way of being with us every where we go, imparting ourselves, our desires. We talked about desires last week. We imparting our desires onto the other in ways that may not be appropriate. Uh, maybe, maybe we could look at it this, this way. If you've ever heard the statement, leave it better than you found it. Have you heard this statement? Maybe if you're a camper, you've heard this statement. When you go camping, leave it better than you found it. But I'll be honest, and I don't know if it's my backwards dyslexic mind or if it's just my way of thinking, but this statement, excuse me, has always been a fascinating statement to me. Because if I, if I find a campground and it's pristine, it's pretty hard to leave it better than that. So what's the deal? But then in my backwardsness, I wonder in another sense that if we are the guest in someone's home, then maybe it is to leave it better than we found it is to say we don't like the way your house is. Uh, Perhaps there's some, some edge of insult to the host when we say, hey, you know what, your, your house wasn't, you know, to this standard, so we'll, we'll step it up a little bit. That there's, this, there's this sense about being a guest that is, that is humble and, and not humiliating, but, but you know what I mean, that, that is to, to, take the, to take the low road, to accept your guestness. And so I want to say that there's times where maybe we're not very good guests because when we want to leave it better than we found it, it's almost as though it's almost as though we're declaring our hostness to the host. Instead of just accepting the host as the host and accepting the host's home as the host's home and, and allowing ourselves to be guests 
There is a humility there. There is a space in which we take ourselves off the leadership role and say, you know what, I am going to submit to the host in these ways. So as we enter a person's house, as we enter a person's house, or or whatever the case may be, maybe it's a land. Maybe it's coming onto a space or a property that belongs to someone else. We might need to pay attention. Pay attention to the house rules. Uh, Pay attention to how things are operating and how they are living, and and begin to live in that way, humbly and gently, as Peter declares it. That it is fine to declare our perspectives, but with gentleness, with goodness behind it. Um, maybe maybe this will help, and I know I've used this, this, th- this analogy before, and it always makes me think this way. When we're talking about pairing with someone, I think about, I think about the jump rope, double dutch, right? When the two ropes are going, and I, mean, I was terrible at it when I was a kid. I just didn't do it very well, but there's two. Maybe we could see those with the ropes in their hands as the host, and they've got a rhythm happening. It's very difficult for the guest, the one coming in to jump rope, it's very difficult for them to change the course of the ropes or to change the rhythms. When you're invited in, you're to pair with the rhythms. It's awfully important for us to understand our role as guests. You see, Peter talking to an exile people that are living in Rome, if you will. They're, they're guests, they're exiles in this space. And he's telling them, hey, this is how we live as good guests in the land. I wonder too, though, if this is part of the story that Peter is opening up is what we read in the book of Daniel. You remember Daniel, Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel or you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get thrown in the furnace. You, you know this story where these, these, these exiles are living in the land under Babylonian rule, uh, but they live faithfully to Yahweh. And in their faithfulness to Yahweh, they begin to rise within culture and society. Oh, not because of their awesomeness, not because of those kinds of things. And I don't even want to say that they were trying to climb the ladder of success and influence. They were simply being faithful to the Lord and they got brought along. Obviously, we know the story. That was not without some persecution for them. And I think maybe Peter's reliving a little bit of this story that it, maybe Peter could even say, hey, hey, remember, remember these guys? Remember those four guys in Babylonian exile? Remember how they lived so faithfully to Yahweh? Do that. Live in those ways. So here's the thing. I don't think that this idea of living humbly and living as good hosts is to is to bury our head in the sand for what's going on in culture and ignore it and all that. And that's not certainly what Peter is saying either. But Peter is speaking to a people saying, hey, there is a faithfulness to Yahweh. There is a way in which Jesus lived and operated that was, that was about the goodness to the other. And I think Peter was saying, pay attention. Pay attention to the ways. Live well in those ways as to cause yourself, as to not cause yourself or anyone else undue problems. In fact, maybe if you pay good enough attention, you'll learn the ways so well that you'll be able to shape 
culture and society in particular ways. Uh, I'm not saying to own the world, but to be in it, and to be in it well. Just not to be of it. So grow, grow in awareness. Grow in awareness of your surroundings and what all is happening. We, we could see it now in, in these days, in this pandemic. Now, certainly, this is not new tensions in this world, but certainly pandemic has thrown fuel to the fire. And I'm not saying bury your head and just be a good person. I'm saying pay attention. Pay, pay attention to what's going on, but keep in mind the ways of Christ, gentleness and humility. To live as a good host, gracious to the other. I want to say, too, that this is prayer. This is, this is prayer for us. Prayer being this posture in which we place ourselves in order that we might grow in awareness of God. Awareness of His work in the world. I hope, I hope that as we continue to live within the tensions that we see, and if you're on Facebook, you certainly see the tensions. If you're not on Facebook, I'm sure, you know, whether you're on CNN or Fox News or ABC, NBC, whatever the case may be, you're, you're seeing and feeling the tension. The t- tension is great. And to demand our to demand our way might not be the best approach. To demand our perspective may not be the best approach to live within the tension, but to live as a good guest, to work hard for the community, to pray for the community, to contribute to the blessing of the community. Uh, may. May that be us, church. May we grow as we continue, whether it's meeting like this or being able to come together. May may we be a people who are being shaped by the Lord as good guests. Ultimately, you guys, in His house, and I'm not talking about the church building, I'm talking about His created world. May we be a good guest guest in his house. Uh, maybe there in that sense we could take a rabbit trail and say that that we could probably leave better than we found it. But not if we're talking about the beginning of creation and, and that. that We cannot leave it better than what God created in the beginning. But we can partner with the Lord in what it is to bless the world around it, be it the created world or the relational world, whatever the case may be. So this morning, if you would, uh, come with us to prayer. Sheree and I come. We, we want to pray with you and for you. I know usually that's at the front end of the sermon. Well, we thought we'd change things up. So thanks change things a little bit. So pray with us. Spend some moments with us. And as we do so, ask the Lord to help you pay attention. Pay attention to that which is happening in you and the world around you, all that is going on. And after we spend some time in prayer, we'll come to the table of the Lord. Jesus, thanks for this time to pray together. We do come to you with all of our joys and all of our needs and all of our requests. First, Lord, we give you praise for who you are, that you are king of our lives. You are king of the universe, and you are Lord. We give you our praise and our attention and our time, and we ask, Father, that today you would be glorified in each of our homes spread out all over, that your name has been praised and that we have listened to you and your spirit speaking to us. Lord, help us respond to you in what Pastor Chris has preached. 
that we would be willing to be moved by your spirit and transformed by you. So, Father, soften us. If there's any places in us that are hindered or unsure or even as concrete in our hearts, Lord, I ask that you would soften them and make them as hearts of flesh that can respond to you and be transformed by you. Lord, thanks for this week where Chris and I were able to spend time in prayer here and we're able to pray for each person in our church, for the needs of our church. Lord, thanks for that time. You met us here and we enjoyed being with you. And Lord, we continue to pray for Vel. We know that she's got a long road ahead, but Lord, we give you praise that she's doing so well. Thank you for that. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for moving in her life and moving in her body. Lord, we ask that you continue to give doctors wisdom and decisions that need to be made. And Lord, thanks for touching Art as he's home and doing better. Lord, continue to touch his body as he's recovering. And Father, we give you praise for all that you're doing in our church. Lord, I know that during this time, it's really hard to see what's happening because we're not together with each other. But Lord, I know that you're at work and I believe that you're doing great things in our church body. Lord, I ask for people who are looking for jobs that you provide for them in abundant ways. Lord, for those who are needing food or needing money, Lord, I ask that you would provide in abundant ways, not only uh, miraculously, but through our church. And Lord, thanks for the ways that you give us ideas and how to minister and reach out to our congregation and to this community. We give you praise, and we give you time, and we give you attention. And Lord, for the things that we're lamenting in our world, the lives that are lost, Lord, specifically this week, with Ahmad Arbery and with Briona, Lord, those people that, that died, Lord, that were, were shot down or were killed, Lord, we ask that you would Minister to their families as they're grieving. Father, our country repents for racism and issues between color and ethnicity. Lord, we repent of that. We ask that you would silence that and teach us how to reach across to other humans and love them and embrace them regardless of what they look like or who they are. Lord, help us learn how to be the church. Help us learn how to love Help us learn how to have mercy and wisdom and discernment and kindness. Lord, we repent as a church, as Christians in this world, that there is a lot of negativity in the Christian circles. Lord, we repent of that. We repent of political sidelines, of things that make us face each other instead of stand shoulder to shoulder. So, Lord God, would you do a new thing in our church? Would you do a new thing in our body? Would you silence the lines? Would you teach us how to love each other? Thanks for your goodness and your kindness. We love you. Lord, I echo much of Sheree's prayers. I add my amen to all that she brings to you. And God, I add to those prayers. I add, God, our graduates. Yes. For, for Carly, yeah. for Aiden, and for Megan. God, these young lives that have so much to look forward to, God, we pray yes. that they would not forget us, <laughs> that they would not forget the church. And God, that they would find themselves caught up in your story for the rest of their lives. God, I pray for their success in whatever their plans might be in these moments and these times. God, I pray that they would find themselves um, more encouraged than discouraged as they look forward to the fall and whatever it is their college campus will be, will be operating as. God, I pray I pray that they would know your hope for them, yes. your future for them. God, that they would 
that they would hear your voice in new ways in these days, that they would find direction given by you. God, thanks for them. Thanks for their lives and the excitement that it brings to all of us. The excitement of newness and transition and and all that comes with it. God, we pray your presence over them. Bless them. Speak to them often that they might know your voice, hear your words and your goodness. And God, even beyond them, I pray for our young adults. There's a growing number, it seems, around. God, would, would you speak? Would you gather them? Would you give them a place and a space in which they can interact and, and learn to love each other and laugh together and enjoy each other's company? And God, for so many others, too, I continue to pray for those around this sanctuary, those those faces that I still see. I've seen so many pictures of pastors who have printed faces and taped them to their pews. while While I like the sentiment there, I think I can still see those in each chair. In my mind's eye, where each one family generally sits. So God, as I scan the room, I pray for each one, for each family group, and for each person within that group. God, I pray your voice would be heard in the midst of so much. I know we all hear and see and process differently what is going on and what we see in the news and on TV and whatever else. But God, I pray that, that, that your voice, your voice of hope, your voice of grace would bubble to the surface in all the lives, in all our lives. So God, I pray that we would be a people that live into your story. that we would be a people of grace, that we would be people of mercy, that we would be a people of hope, that we'd be a people that declare Christ and His way as life. Amen.
And so we come to the table of the Lord. We come to the table of the Lord that is, that is His story. His story of self-giving love and grace to the world. And so we come not to declare the bread and the cup as magic. But we come to declare the bread and the cup as story that we have entered in. Or that we are partaking so if you have your elements, go ahead and, and, and get those. If you don't have them, there should be a few minutes here to, to, to run and grab those. Uh, but this is where we want to still, even though we're digital, come together. Uh, come together to the table of the Lord as His guests. So may it be Christ's body broken for you, His blood shed on your behalf. And that night that He was betrayed, He took the bread and He broke it. So this is my body broken for you. And in the same way, He passed the cup and said, this is my blood that's been spilt on your behalf. Take and eat, take and drink. Every time you do this, do it in remembrance of me, of myself giving love for the world. Amen? Hear this benediction today. And now may the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept intact and blameless at the coming of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. Go in his peace.